I'm going to talk about Seattle and how it reminded me of what happened in Taiwan. I was there six years ago, April 2014. In this picture, that's me right there wearing this shirt, recording video with this. And uh, for the record, my lawyer, this guy, tells me that I didn't break any laws. So, Rugo needs a Taiwan Zongfu to run. All right, just taking care of Taiwan's swamp. What's happening in Seattle is reminding me of what I saw on those days. So I'm going to scale myself down. I'm just going to share pictures and tell you what I saw and what I've learned and why uh, I'm not, well, why I think what I think about Seattle. So this was a music video. I'll link it. They're on the legislature floor. And about an hour after this, they left. And I videotaped the whole thing. Um... Yep, because they were clearing out. This is a time lapse. All right. Um, yeah, I was there. And that's the National Legislature. Uh, I got to get my videos here. Like I say, that's my lawyer. I was there in the room. This is one of their leaders. Uh, America's government, compared to Seattle, would call him a warlord. That's Lin Feifan. And uh, this is Chen Weiting. Uh, don't tell him I had a picture of him sleeping. He was shy and didn't want pictures. Those are the two leaders. When they left, Weiting, we'll be out mafani. This is the Megora and Dao Minzu. I just told him that I want to show Americans about democracy. When they left, they cleaned up. And from where I am taking this picture, if, you, if I turn right around, You'd see that. And here you see a police officer. This is an air vent. Uh, sunflowers was the theme because they were shining light on the truth. Uh, there was an idea of a botanist. A botanist went and donated a bunch of flowers to him and said, you guys need a symbol because you're shining truth. The police had helped them set up vents like this because it was too many people in the room and the police were concerned that they'd suffocate. Yeah, that's how the police in Taiwan were. Thank you. Bravo, police in Seattle. I'm, I'm going to get through some stuff. The other side of that door, we were just looking from the other side of this door, six days earlier, okay, we're looking through the other side of that door. Here's some police. Okay, they're, they're guarding this. That's the vent going in. This guy was drunk uh, at the time. You had a standoff. There's a bunch of students here. Police are there just to make sure nobody fights, like to stop this drunk guy. Uh, they were controlling who goes in and out. They wanted to make sure that there weren't gang members or something going in to kill people. They, but if you were part of the protest, the police would let you go in because behind me, holding the camera, was 30,000 Taiwanese standing out in the streets. And I'm going to look at pictures in a minute. Um, what I learned being there is that Democracy and government of the people is not a Western idea. It's a human instinct idea like w drinking water and having roads and families. Let's go back to, I carry my founding documents of America with me. Let's go back to a document that's unfortunately controversial in in america the declaration of independence we hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal and are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights that among these are life a right that george floyd was denied When you deny a right to some people, you deny it to all people. Liberty in the pursuit of happiness and that to secure these rights, governments are instituted among men deriving their just powers 
from the consent of the governed, from the people. That's why they're fair. Government's legit because the people say so. And that when any form of government, state, local, police, federal, anything, become destructive to these ends, it is the right of the people to alter or abolish it and institute new government. What's happening in Seattle is what happened in Taiwan in 2014. Um, but, where were we here? David Brown, John Hopkins was with AIT. Oh, Google, you want attention. He was from AIT, America's not embassy in Taiwan. This here is a news story, probably, of David Brown complaining about the sunflower movement. I showed you pictures of that. Because David Brown, Taipei Times, talked about it. Here's April. He basically said the same things about the sunflower movement that Trump is saying about Seattle. <sighs> yeah, there, there they were in the room. And he said that it was just the, the Democrat People's Party in Taiwan that was trying to get votes. Well, guess what? The Democrat People's Party now controls the legislature in Taiwan, and, and the president is a Democrat People's Party person in Taiwan, and they're the ones that America's government, all the pro-Trump supporters, they've been working with this party in Taiwan to help fight back China. So, so all the Republican voters that want China gone and like Trump getting rid of China, and I, I'm, I'm going to be honest, I, I like Trump getting rid of China, uh, keeping us safe from it. I like the Democrat People's Party here getting safe from it. But David Brown said, oh, they just want votes. And he basically said the same thing. Yeah, that never happened in America. And he'd been in Taiwan's not embassy, because Taiwan's a not country, right, for 20 years. And he was wrong. And the President Trump, whom I support, is being just as wrong because he doesn't know. He doesn't know. All right. Um, let's get back to some pictures. This is what it looked like in... Th 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 these were pictures I took. I went there. Outside on the street, someone had a sunflower. Th these were the street, 2014. This is what the streets looked like in... In Taipei, just outside the legislature, so there's 30,000 people out there. There was artwork. Here was a stage. You know, they'd have people come and give speeches about democracy and liberty, and that government gets its power from the people. Here's a police standoff. The police had stood off. They weren't rushing anybody. They just said, "We're police. You're not going to take over everything. Uh, you stay over there, and we stay over here. You got to talk. You can talk." There was a standoff. Um, people were in the streets. There was artwork everywhere. Uh, people were singing songs and sitting, talking in, in focus groups to talk about projects and democracy or whatever. Uh, these are cell phone chargers. Electronic stores around Taiwan had donated to the cause of having students take over their national legislature. Um, these were all donated um, supplies. Oh, and th this guy it's donated sleeping bags so the students could sleep inside. And this guy was so happy that I was taking his picture. Uh, this guy handing out free water to make sure people didn't get thirsty on the street. Um, it's going uh, artwork everywhere. Uh, this actually, it's, it's something in Chinese. It's like never give up hope, you know, or keep your hope. Um, artwork on the streets. It, it just reminds me of what I see in Seattle. This was their premier. It's like a secretary general in America. The president leads this, the cabinet in Taiwan. It's someone else who leads the cabinet. And also, they create all the laws, unlike Congress. It's weird. So that was a powerful bureaucrat nobody voted for, and they hated him. Uh, the shrimp, I don't know. In Taiwan or Chinese culture, Asian culture, the shrimp is an insult of some kind, and that's what that's about. Um, very peaceful is being sarcastic. Uh, the dog was giving out free hugs. Someone had given me this. Um, this little boy was really angry, uh, and so... <laughs> Uh, yeah, uck the government. Um, this was up on the second floor of the legislature, and, and this is important. Uh, there were two floors 
the legislature had an upper floor and a lower floor. And the upper floor, they were there to keep it secure. Here's vents going in and out, down into the chamber below. Okay, remember, the reason the students took it over is because it's illegal for police to go in there without permission. So at late at night, the students ran into the legislature and it was illegal for the police to go in and stop them. It was the national legislature floor. Um, and they had supplies that were donated. The police let them bring in supplies to make sure everybody was safe. This was where the leaders were outside. Same went turn around. Courtyard's empty because police had that part blocked off. Uh, downstairs, there's police in the foyer, but there's also students walking, you know, protesters, occupy people going up and down upstairs. And here's the door. Um, I'm going to play a little video and we're going to walk inside. That's what it was. I was there. And um, you can't go in this door. But it was occupied. So we could. Kind of. I was, I was there as press. The students invited me in. My lawyer told me it's okay. They piled up chairs to keep people out. Now they're unpiling the chairs because they're going to leave in about 15 or 30 minutes. Um, I was there in the last 21 hours when they walked out. All right. Okay. That's, that's, that, that's enough. Okay. Um, so, uh, in another room, here's a bunch of police inside. This says Apple. That's the newspaper. The newspaper was really pushing this. The Jimmy Lai. You can look him up. L. AI, LAI, Jimmy Lai. He's from Hong Kong. He's got a big newspaper in Taiwan. And they say that he was just pushing it. They say he pushed the protests in Hong Kong. Yeah, there were people pushing the protests, but it doesn't mean they weren't legitimate. Uh, there were a whole bunch of lawyers. These lawyers were there for, I think, two reasons. They wanted to get famous and have you know, become famous and network because lots of people were there. They also cared about democracy and the students, but it was also their chance to get their faces out. There were a bunch of doctors doing the same thing. Um, so anyhow, that was outside on the street. Um, that's it. That's what I wanted to share with you. Um, oh, I should show you... Uh, no, I, I did show you the picture. I showed you all the pictures. That's everything. I see what's happening in Seattle. And I don't see that much of a difference. Um, I hope... I, I mean, I, I see the police being concerned about garbage getting dealt with. I understand the issue of lingering racism stuff. And, and, and I'll, I'll tell you why on this. I've been in Taiwan 11 years. And I've made videos about how the Chinese... Uh, I don't, you know, Taiwan or Chinese... Or, ta Taiwanese or Chinese, okay, in culture... So the term Chinese can mean a lot of things. But it was that China culture that's attacked me. And I've made videos about that. I've got, I had a petition about it. Nobody cared. If you're black and you try to get help and you nobody cares, I, know, I got a petition with like under 30 signatures on it. Yep. Um, I've had the Chinese going after me because I was white. And they've got their own racism thing going on. It's different from what's got, got, what would be happening between whites and blacks in America. But I know what it's like to be in Taiwan and tell everybody that the people in your Chinese government, in the, the Chinese speaking government, Taiwanese, are being mean to me and my Taiwanese friends don't believe it because it doesn't happen to them. And so when black people tell white people, it's, it's kind of some culture here and it's kind of some baggage there and it's, 
It was Bruce Hornsby's song, That's Just the Way It Is, a white guy that Tupac thankfully used to talk about the same issue. People say, oh, that's just the way it is. Well, that's just the way it is. And that thinking has been what's allowed it to linger so long. That's why, you know, it's been going on. No, we can't let ourselves say, oh, that's just the way it is. And when black people in America talk about how stuff happens and people don't see it and it's not fair, I'll never know what it's like to be a black person, but I get the idea that people are unfair to you because of your skin color and other people don't see it. It is real. And white friends in America, when black people talk about it, they're not joking. And you don't know until you've lived in another country without a whole bunch of tourism money to throw money at all your problems and make everybody fake smile at you. You've got to actually live in a country and actually need something and not be super rich in order for you to see what's actually going on and how they really treat people when no one's looking. So, seeing how Taiwan's government treated me, I understand why the Taiwanese were so fed up that they took over their legislature. Now, in Michigan, I was around hunters. I went to the gun club in Cadillac. I think I was a marksman second bar. I'm pretty good with a rifle. I know how to shoot a pistol accurately. And some people would show up that were Michigan militia, not most. I was around him. My father actually had a brief conversation with Norm Olson once. Dad asked a few questions about the militia, wanting to know what the Michigan militia was. He looked later on some list and found out that he was the contact person for the area. And he jokingly said, I've been drafted by the militia. And that was all we've ever seen with the Michigan militia. But they're around and we'd talk to them and hunters. And I'll tell you something. Police in Michigan, in, in some departments here and there, they have it in for white people who think that the Constitution means that we have rights. The people are the ones who decide if a government's legitimate. That's what our government says. And it's the Constitution that Obama didn't like that gave the right to the people in Seattle to do what they're doing. We've got Democrats taking guns exercising the Constitution, doing things that conservatives like, but it's the party of the conservatives and Republicans that are against it. That makes no sense to me from what I saw with democracy in Taiwan. We have a lot in common, friends. Now, I understand Trump's thinking. We've got to have order because I, as the white guy, used to not know what was really going on. And I'm hopeful Trump has changed his opinion on stuff. Don't we all? Don't we want a president who learns that he was stupid and changes? He's done that some. I'm hopeful that he can learn that the Seattle police and the Washington state police telling the protesters, all right, you want something? We didn't give it to you. You got a right to, 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 to make sure it gets done. The right way to do something involves it actually happening. I hope that Trump can understand that, yeah, uh, that Chaz does eventually need to leave. The, the Sunflower students left. And the people up on the second floor, I'm going to try to find my second floor video here. I'm going to go back just a little bit. See, up, up on the second floor, you had to go around back to get up there. There were actually two groups of Sunflower students. Up on the second floor, they were the muscle. They were kind of the, the thugs to keep everyone safe. They were security. They were logistics. They were the ones that kept supplies moving. And all the smart people and the lawyer students and stuff were on the first floor. And... The leaders, Lin Feifan and Chen Weiting, where were they? Let me show you a picture of Lin Feifan. Lin Feifan. The leaders had negotiated with the speaker and said, all right, we'll leave, but you've got to promise that you're not going to have secret talks with China. And the speaker of the legislature said, okay, I promise. And he kept his promise, Wang Jinping. And when they were going to leave, I remember seeing the students upstairs, the second floor students talking 
with uh, Lin and Chun, the, the two leaders of this. And the second floor students were angry that they were leaving. They did not want to leave. And I do believe eventually a lot of the leaders at the Seattle thing are going to say the government finally obeyed us and we're leaving. That time, I believe, is coming. And a lot of people are going to be really hurt. And I understood the second floor students. They were muscle. And heart is a muscle. And they had a lot of strength. And they had a lot of love. And they fought for this. And they weren't happy with it leaving. But I hope that Seattle does get the same resolve, but the government's got to obey the people. And I hope that Trump can understand that because we learned democracy from Taiwan because democracy is not an American idea. It's a human idea. Um, in Michigan, some of the police would say that we who believe that the Constitution is law were weird and dangerous. When, when they get out of Detroit, there's no more black people to bully. So the police have to feel superior to somebody. I, think, I really think this happens sometimes. I've got friends that are police, uh, good people. But this culture, they need someone else. They need a way to beat up on white people. There's, there's no black people to get mad at or whatever. And so they call them sovereign citizens. And the Michigan militia and the movement in Seattle, the, the Democrat, the Republican Michigan militia and the Democrats in Seattle are basically facing the same problem. And... It's the Constitution that's holding us all together. So, I really don't agree with Obama trying to change the Constitution because the Constitution is what made Seattle possible. And that's what we conservatives really always all ever wanted. Con conservatives, Republicans, were never really against black people. They just wanted to make sure that we had the ability to do Seattle if we needed to.